Mark live from John Hammond Street in Accra with digital address number GA006-64714. This is Midday Live with me, Parkus Yasari, coming up in the bulletin. President Kat sought for construction of first Tamale interchange under the Sino-Hydro deal, but my minority in parliament laments over value for money under the two billion Chinese agreement. Also in the bulletin, the Ministry of Fisheries announces a ban on fishing activities from May 15 to June 15 for canoe and onshore operators. Also, residents of Takwa in the western region block the main Takwa Takwadi road to protest deplorable states of the over 10 kilometer stretch. And elsewhere on the continent around the world, uh, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu secures a clear path to re election. Later in sports, Manchester United manager Oligana Sosha is confident of Champions League clash with fancied club Barcelona. We've got details of all these stories plus many more coming up in the next 60 minutes. A reminder that we're streaming live on Facebook. You can also join us with your views, comments and suggestions on any of our top headline stories this hour. Visit our social media pages. That's on TV3 Ghana on uh, Facebook as well as on Twitter. Now, ranking member of the Roads and Transport Committee in Parliament, Kwame Agboja, has accused the office of the Vice President of deliberately concealing figures in the Sino-Hydro contract. The Adaklu MP is raising questions over value for money assessment, which he says is yet to be conducted. President Akufado is scheduled to cut sword for the Tamale Intergen project uh, tomorrow, April 10, for official commencement. Uh, that's the day of the $1.5 billion road uh, initiative under the $2 billion government of Ghana and Sino Hydro uh, Master Project. That agreement, uh, that, uh, you know, uh, program is currently un undergoing in, uh, in somewhere in Tamale, uh, as we're going to bring you live feed from there right now. Meanwhile, the ranking member support agreement between the government of Ghana and Sino Hydro of China was reached in 2017. It was later approved by Parliament and two sets of contracts were laid before Parliament. The two contracts were the Engineering Procurement Construction Contract EPC Deferred Payment Agreement DPA. Under the first tranche, a number of roads have been earmarked for construction. Before the president cuts the sword, a major concern has emerged from parliament. As we speak, we are not aware that value for money audit has been done. All we heard was that some individuals have been selected from Ghana Institute of Surveyors whose uh, locals we don't know. So it is not like an independent organization like Crown Agents to do value for money. The report is still not even known to anybody, yet they are going to cut off. I raised the significant issue of the fact that there's no legal opinion on the nature of the contract. Because if you brought an agreement to Parliament, value for money is not condition precedent. Is the contractor bound to actually carry it out? No. The Roads and Transport Committee ranking member is blaming the Vice President, who was instrumental in brokering the deal. If you, if you have a situation where, just to get a site, a, a, a contracted site at Afuans of Fancy, seven hundred thousand dollars. I'm looking for the country surveyor or project manager that will confirm that as a true cost of just a site compound in Afuansi. So, the Sino Hydro project is shrouded in too much secrecy, located in the office of the vice president. But the member of the special budget committee, Yalfrim Pong, dispelled any wrongdoing. Those processes have begun. Time is also of essence uh, in the execution of this project. So. We are, we are just pleading that once, once the processes of, of this uh, value for money and all other things are ongoing, we can begin the projects. Because if designs are ready, most of the things are ready. So why should that small aspect uh, uh, hold back the execution of this project? That's what we are saying. Because several projects have, have, have taken place in this country that they started before the value for money audit uh, came. 
All right, so staying a while longer on the story, government says a value for money audit is not a prerequisite for the uh, parliamentary approval of infrastructural projects. This comes on the back of calls by the minority of a government's decision to start projects under the Sino Hydro Agreement. Information Minister Kojo Ponkuma said a value for money audit is already available and can be requested through uh, if the minority wishes to do so. There are two agreements that always go to Parliament. There's the financing agreement, which talks about the terms of the um, financial arrangements for a particular transaction. And then there is usually the technical agreement, which deals with the technical specifications of a particular project. So the financing agreement will go to the Finance Committee. Then the um, commercial agreement or, I, I mean, I beg your pardon, the technical agreement will go to the committee responsible. If it's roads, it will go to the roads. Um, subcommittee. If it's a hospital, it will go to the uh, health subcommittee. And value for money has never been a prerequisite, and that's why Parliament was able to go ahead and give parliamentary approval. If, however, Parliament requires a value for money audit, Parliament will request for it subsequently. There is a value for money um, um, audit report that has been prepared by, I think, the Ghana Institute of uh, Surveyors. It's been submitted through um, to the roads ministry, which spells out the various areas of potential risk and uh, gives a specification on it that um, the risk associated with this transaction is low, whether you talk of the contractor, the commercial terms, and all of it. So it is not true that there's no value for money audit. There is a, a, um, a value for money audit, which is available. I've cited it myself. It is not even a prerequisite. And if um, our good friends on the minority require that, they can request for it through Parliament and it will be made um, available uh, to them. Meanwhile, the Minister for Roads and Highways, Kwesi Yamako Atta, has revealed about 70% uh, of projects will be constructed in all 16 regions of Ghana under the government of Ghana's Sino Hydro Master Project Support Agreement between Ghana and China. The two billion US dollar project will witness the construction of two interchanges in Tamale. Uh, Zubaida Ishmael is uh, at the launch of the sword curtain and groundbreaking in uh, Tamale and joins us live on the phone lines. Zubaida, uh, so what more can you tell us? Hello Zubaida, what more can you tell us? I'm afraid Zubaida cannot hear us. Uh, so the Minister for Roads and Highways, Kwesi Amako Atta, has revealed about 70 projects will be constructed in all 16 regions of Ghana under the Government of Ghana Sino Hydro Master Project Support Agreement between the Government of Ghana and China. Well, the two billion US dollar project will witness the construction of two interchanges in Tamale. My colleague uh, Zubaida Ishmael is at the launch of the sword cutting and groundbreaking in Tamale and joins us live on the phone line. Zubaida, so what more can you tell us? Hello, Zubaida Ishmael. If you can hear me, what more can you report? Um, what I can say is that um, how can see the program has come to a successful end and the president has finished delivering his um, address. And um, key in his um, address um, is that uh, the first phase of this project will see some ten regions benefiting and so for the first phase it's not all 16 regions that are going to benefit and uh, key among uh, the beneficiary uh, um, towns or communities um one is the tamale interchange um we have the adenta dodoa road which the president says they're going to um, make it a dual uh, uh, carriage we also have 58 kilometer feeder roads um that are going to be constructed in the western region we have, um, he also captured the Hohoi Jasekan Road, which is on the Eastern Corridor. Um, he also spoke about um, 69 steel bridges that are also going to be constructed in part of this country. Now, the regions among um, that is the Ashanti region, we have the Western North, we have um, Enchi, and then we have um, the Eastern Corridor as a boy. Um, Eastern Corridor Road, sorry, um, Park AC. We're also talking about the fact that the project is going to last 13 months, and that's one the president was very emphatic. He said 13 months, and it's a 13 months. Nothing less and nothing more. So 
um, residents in Adenta, residents in Tamale, residents in Hohoe and Jessica should expect that their roads and their interchanges will be constructed within 13 months. All right, thank you very much, uh, Zubaida Ishmael. Is uh, right there at the groundbreaking ceremony uh, where she's been reporting on what's really has been happening. Uh, the president has just spoken. Uh, we know that the Minister for Roads and Highways, Chrissy Amaku, as I had earlier revealed, about 70 projects will be constructed in all 16 regions of Ghana under the government of Ghana's Sino Hydro Master Project Support Agreement between Ghana and China. Uh, we also know the two billion US dollar project uh, will witness the construction of two interchanges in Tamale. And that's essentially what Zubeda has been bringing to our attention. Uh, you're still watching Media Life here on TV3. Uh, we're streaming live on Facebook. Uh, if you're excited about this news and you want to contribute to our top stories, especially this the story, uh, you can visit our social media feed. It's TV3 Ghana on Facebook and on Twitter. Let's know what you're thinking or what you make of this latest announcement. Now, away from that, residents of Takwa in the western region have blocked the main Takwa Takwari road uh, to protest the deplorable state of the over 10 kilometer uh, Takwa Ahiatiasu stretch of the main road. Uh, the situation has forced school children and scores of workers to trek on foot. For every 250 meters on the stretch, residents have mounted a barrier and bent vehicle ties. The protesters, also known as concerned residents of Chakwa, have given the government one week to fix the road or will use an excavator to cut through the road. According to them, respiratory disease are now on the increase in Takwa Israel municipality due to the incessant dust emanating from the road. Pregnant women are also losing their pregnancies in view of the dumpy nature of the road, they claimed. The group said, despite the huge revenue government collects from various mining companies, Takwa, especially their roads, are in a sorry state. Ship owners, operators of hotels and eateries along the road also complain you, do you realize what happened in the sales. first story president of the concerned residents of takwa david kumi insisted successive governments have not been fair to takwa he claimed that three months ago the minister of roads and highways came to inspect the road and promised the people that a contractor will be given the necessary funds to begin work on the road but nothing has been done about it <laughs> All right, so join us on the line for more on this particular developing story is a man on the ground, Paco Joe Peters Pa. Thank you for your time. So uh, can you paint a mental picture of how poor the road is? Uh, I got, yeah, the situation is, is, is very terrible. I, I can confirm that to you because first 2 a.m. today, no vehicle has been able to fly on the stretch. And as I see to you now, the protesters are still protesting. We were all thinking that maybe they would be finishing everything by night. But as you know, they are still burning ties and other things. But the leadership are now with the uh, MC as his office. I called him personally and he said he was out of town. That the coordinating director is receiving them and he will receive the petition on his behalf. But what the people are saying is that until government assures them that the road will be totally constructed, they are not going to uh, allow any vehicle to, to, to fly. So we are waiting for what the authorities will be telling them. But the latest information I'm gathering is that they have called for reinforcement from Takradi, the security, that's military reinforcement from Takradi to come and uh, together with the fire service to come and quench those uh, burning ties and other things. Because as far as that, no vehicle will be able to fly on that stretch. Those who are traveling from Sifu or whoever, they are all stranded here. I spoke to some of them. I spoke to a nurse who works at the uh, government hospital. And he hasn't been able to go to the office this morning. According to her, she came and stood at the junction from four. She has been there since people are behind her waiting for her to attend to them, but she is still stranded here. So the situation is still the same here in Tapa. Mm, Parkwood, I imagine it must be a very chaotic scene there. Come again? I imagine it must be a very chaotic scene. Serious. Because everything is on the front today. Nobody, almost majority of them, I can't see everybody, but majority of the workers are, are among the protesters here. What they are saying is that they are having enough of the situation. So should they lay down their tools? Just for today, for in order for the government to uh, come to their, to their aid, 
they are concerned with that rather than going to the office and living in the same condition which, which is not improving. That is what they are saying. Park Hojo Peters, our man on the ground reporting live from uh, the Western region. In other stories, the Ministry of Fisheries and Aquaculture says no group of people can hold it to ransom as it launches the close season of fishing 2019. Sector Minister Elizabeth Ofolikwe said this, said this at a news conference in Accra a while ago. Our man Solomon Mensa is at that news conference and joins us via telephone line for some more details. Uh, Solomon, thank you. Uh, so what else has the minister been saying? I'm afraid we're still trying to re-establish contact with Solomon. And the news is that the Ministry of Fisheries and Aquaculture says no group of people uh, can hold it to ransom as it launches the closed season of fishing 2019. Uh, Sector Minister Elizabeth Afoli Kwe said, uh, said this at a news conference in Accra a while ago. Um, our man Solomon Mensa uh, is at that news conference and joins me via telephone for further details to this. Solomon, if you can hear me now, what else has the minister been saying? Yeah, Solomon, if you can hear me, what else has the minister been saying? Right, so part of the, um, the minister for fisheries and agriculture um, development, and the developer has been saying, and he actually launched the 2019 close season. And that, um, what he's been saying is that um, no group of people can hold the ministry to answer. You remember last year, um, the ministry intended to have the close season, but the state of fishing from some fisher folks. And so this year, 2019, the minister is saying that no group of people can either hold the, 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 the ministry or government to ransom property. Uh, right. And, and, and have we received any response from the uh, interested parties at that press conference? Sorry, Dr. Sakirin, here we come again. I was asking, I would imagine there are stakeholders there at the press conference. Have they said anything mm -hmm. about it? Yes. Yes, so um, the National Fisheries um, um, Association of Ghana is present. And we have a lot of um, fisher folks from um, the Marana country, Obama, Hinenama, Kodjo, um, Kondi, um, and Kondi is here. Um, the Niva, the fisher chiefs is here. And a lot of um, other um, fisher chiefs are, are here to um, bring the occasion. And they've all been given their support the closing and actually they say i mean the fishermen um they say um they uh, propose the date that is 15th may for the close season um to set uh, 15th of june this year and so for nana nana um Kondia, for instance the nana he said i mean he speak he said that no fisher folk um should uh, stand against this close season um this year and that they will make sure that um, this becomes a success. And they are even calling for it to be institutionalized so that every year we know that um, we are having a close in May or August. And so that has been part of what's happening here at the several um, training center in Accra. Uh, finally, uh, Solomon, we know the Fisheries Ministry uh, will be teaming up with the Navy. Uh, what has the minister been saying about this collaboration? Right, so uh, yes, we told the Navy will be collaborating with the Fisheries Ministry to enforce the close season. And so the Minister, um, Elizabeth Offaly, said that she understands and she knows that the Navy is challenged in some way, but um, they are poised to ensure that um, this becomes a success. And so um, that is what the Minister said about the, uh, what, you, what you call the, the, the Navy. And, uh, and so um, I also spoke to the Naval Captain um, Michael uh, Ahim, uh, who is the Director of Naval Operations, and he said that they are ready, their men are trained, and they will be patrolling the sea as the, 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 the close season begins come um, 15th May of, of this year. And so maybe, although they are challenged logistically, but they are also prepared to ensure that um, we have the close season this year. Thank you very much, uh, Solomon. Is our man on the beat at that press conference organized by the uh, Fisheries Minister? If so, watch and make their life here on TV3. We're streaming live on Facebook. Still ahead, we've got the very latest in business. We've got sports and we've got international news. Hello and welcome to the business news segment here on Midday Live. Um, we begin with some happenings uh, in Elmina, where some fishermen in the central region are outraged that the color of premix fuel 
has changed and they're receiving very low quality uh, for their premix fuel. Now, they're therefore demanding an explanation from the National Petroleum Authority and government on the situation. The fishermen are complaining also that their outboard motors have been destroyed because of the supply of uh, poor quality fuel. Uh, let's get on the phone lines now and speak to Nilante Bannerman, who's the national chairman of the premix fuel committee. So what do you make of the concerns of these fishermen? All right, so some fishermen at Elmina in the central region are outraged uh, that the color of premix fuel has changed and that they are receiving very poor quality uh, for their premix fuel. Now, they are therefore demanding an explanation from the National Petroleum uh, Authority as well as government on this situation. Uh, the fishermen are complaining also that their outboard motors have been destroyed because of the supply of poor uh, quality fuel. Let's get on the phone lines now and speak to Neil Ante uh, Bannerman, who is the national chairman of the premix uh, fuel committee. Thank you, Neil Ante, for your time. So what do you make of the concerns of this fisherman? I'm afraid we're unable to raise uh, Neil Ante Bannerman on the phone lines. We're trying uh, pretty hard to re-establish contact with him uh, on this uh, developing story. As and when we do, we'll bring him back on the phone lines. But we will not hesitate to shoot and kill. Uh, these were the words of the head of uh, security of the Ghana Great Company, Major Lawrence Apia, retired as he sounded a stern warning to some persons who allegedly attempted burning some pipelines belonging to Cyrus Oil Services Limited in Tema. Our reporter, Selma Menya, uh, has, uh, has come through with the following report. There were attempts by some persons on Sunday evening to set fire to pipelines belonging to Cyrus Oil Services in the Tema Power Enclave, where Gridco and VRA also operate. Thus follows the cutting down of pylons belonging to Gridco around the same location some two weeks ago. Addressing the media after a tour along the affected pipelines, head of security at the Ghana Grid Company, Gridco, Major Lawrence Apia retired, warned perpetrators who he described as saboteurs. Sometimes you cannot arrest because of what the man is doing, where he can run to an order. And I'm saying that we have soldiers in the enclave as you saw them at the gate patrolling. If we see anybody doing any of these things and arrest is not possible, we will shoot to kill, not to maim. He indicated that the recent attacks on the installations in the power enclave have resulted in a restructuring of their security strategy with support from other agencies. Of course, we are not going to sit down and allow it. So we have done all we need to do to have soldiers, police, the BNI, the national security, all assisting us to ensure that we need it in the bat. Unfortunately, three days ago, they attempted again, but our security guard, as you can see, the security post up there, saw them and gave the, our soldiers a head up. So they chased him and they ran away. He had already lit the fire, trying to burn the fuel lines on the ground to cause a possible explosion in the enclave. Manager in charge of health, Safety, security and environment at Cyrus Oil, Daniel Ameho, noted the pipelines were exposed since it is an ongoing project. For now, I would say it doesn't pose any danger to the area. Because we haven't finished uh, what we are supposed to do on it, that is why it is open. You could see that the other parts were covered all the way down to the tower. wall. He threw more light on the possible damage if there was fuel in the pipelines and the suspect had succeeded in blowing it. It will have uh, affected the whole Tema enclave over here. In the sense that we have all the pipelines interlinked to Tema oil refinery, to the harbor, to the jetty, mm. and then moving to APD, from APD to uh, Mamiota. Wow. So there's a network of pipelines over here. So if there were to be fuel in it and the person has succeeded, the whole fuel supply, the power enclave will have been in trouble. Two weeks ago, Two of the 161,000 towers located in the Gridco enclave near the free zone area in Tema fell over other towers after both holding the pylon were cut and removed. Chief Technical Engineer in charge of lines at Gridco, Bernard Tekpo, gave the assurance work will be completed in two weeks. Partially one is almost standing and then one is completed and is lying down there so it's a matter of just lifting it. We could even have done that yesterday, but for the rains, we will not be able to bring the cranes here to, to, to do that because the crane might get stuck. Okay, so we intend to rather continue to assemble the second one, by which time the grounds will also be very 
solid for us to come and do the two at a go. All right, so let's return to our earlier story uh, where some fishermen are protesting about the color of uh, premix fuel. The claim has changed and is also of very poor quality. Now, they are demanding an explanation from the National Petroleum Authority as well as government. The fishermen are complaining also that their outboard motors have been destroyed because of the supply of poor quality fuel. Let's get on the phone lines now and speak to Neil Ante Bannerman. He is the chairman of the Premix Fuel Committee. Neil Ante, thank you very much for your time. So what do you make of the concerns of these fishermen? Um, good afternoon to you and to your viewers. Um, I want to put on record that uh, we've not officially had any complaints from any fisher at all with this matter. As I speak to you, the only person making that assertion is one Mr. Manuma. And it just came to our notice that Manuma is claiming that the blue dye that is not uh, that has not been as, uh, with the, that has not been added to the payments in these few days is causing the destruction of several other bottles in order. My brother, I want to put on record and then uh, you can verify from the experts, from MPA and from uh, the Kenoya refining, that the blue dye that is added to the premix doesn't add any quality at all to the premix. It only differentiates the premix fuel from the other fuel so that it cannot be sold as any other fuel to the unsuspecting public. Now, premix fuel is made up of marine mix, regular uh, uh, PMS, and then the uh, blue dye. Store has officially written to us, and we have notified all the stakeholders, including the uh, regional ministers and then the MMPCs, that for some time now the blue dye is, uh, is, is in shortage. So it will not be added anymore to the premix. And so Thor has taken delivery of some more of the uh, blue dye. All right, Nilante, uh, Nilante, hold on. I, I, I do appreciate your explanation, uh, but do you intend to look into this matter and to investigate further? Come again. I was saying that I do appreciate your explanation to, to the concerns, but they have raised the concerns about what they, they think is happening. Do you intend to look into it any further and to investigate to find out the authenticity or otherwise of their claim? What I'm saying is that the blue dye that is complaining of doesn't add any quality at all to the premix world. It only differentiates the premix world from the other world so that you'll be able to tell the premix world. And Thor has written officially to all the stakeholders, including MPA, that they are in shortage of the blue dye. And so have you explained this to the fishermen? Have you told them what's happening? Yes, we've made them aware. We've made them aware. It's really Thor wrote to us. We also wrote to all the MFTs. So we have regional and uh, zonal operation officers. We wrote to all of them to notify the fishers. And we have done that already. And since they are still complaining, would you meet them? Would you meet them to further clarify your point to them? But brother, if you allow me, if you allow me. We don't have much time, sir, so I just need you to be very brief with so me. So if you'll be able to host me in your studios, I can make time for you so that whatever questions you have, we can deal with it. Because <laughs> as I speak to you, premix fuel is being supplied regularly to the fishers. It's coming on time. It's flooded the whole place. The NDC, and for that matter, Manu, who represented the NDC at the uh, government appointee on the previous premix fuel committee, the National Premix Fuel Committee, has no moral right. So we comment on premix issues. And so what you're saying is that the, the quality of the premix fuel has not in any way been be compromised? That has never been compromised at all. I thank you very much. Thank the you very much. Uh, is not present doesn't mean the quality has been compromised. Not I appreciate you. I appreciate your, 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 your comments and your clarification to the matter. Neil Ante Bannerman is the uh, National Chairman of the Pre Premix Fuel Committee. Uh, join us on the phone lines. In other stories, the Customs Division of the Ghana Revenue Authority in the Shanti region exceeded its 2018 target by collecting 652 million CDs as revenue for last year. The figure represents a 12.5% increase of its targeted 578 million CDs. For the region this year is 800 million CDs. Officers at the Tax and Good Governance Weeks are sensitizing the public on the need to file tax returns and also register for the tax identification number. 
the outreach program is to encourage voluntary tax compliance with a view to rope in more businesses. The GRA has developed an integrated application and cooperation system, an online platform for the filing of tax returns. GRA has developed an electronic payment platform through which operators in the informal sector, particularly commercial transport operators and small-scale self-employed persons on the tax stamp will pay their quarterly taxes through mobile money in collaboration with one of the banks. This will be added all sooner than later. The Kumasi Metropolitan Chief Executive, Osei SCBNG, said achieving government's agenda of Ghana Beyond Aid requires improved tax mobilization. To enable government meet the legitimate demand of populace, it is imperative for us to contribute and raise enough revenue domestically so that we will avoid stringent conditionalities attached to loans and grants from developing countries. All right, that's all for the very latest in business news. Uh, we'll return with some more stories. Now, the Secretary General of the International Maritime Organization, Katik Lim, says the IMO is creating more opportunities to make maritime trade more appealing to women globally. He made the observation while on a visit to strengthen the already existing partnership and assess, uh, assess development in Ghana's uh, maritime industry. Raising awareness of that issues. So we are implementing various kind of reception and uh, providing relevant information around the world. That is a uh, changing dramatically, uh, big improvement. And the second one, we are providing more opportunity to women to take a study at our training course for the, uh, mainly in the World Maritime University and the International Maritime Law Institute and other short uh, period of a training course. Ghana became a member of the International Maritime Organization in 1959 and has since collaborated with the Ghana Maritime Authority in building the capacity of the maritime sector. During the visit, the Secretary General of the organization, Ketak Lim, addressed the Sith Women's International Shipping and Trading Association Africa Conference in Accra and paid a courtesy call on the Vice President, Dr. Mahamudu Baumia. He later toured the regional maritime university after addressing the student's body and inspected works on the Tema Port expansion project. The IMO Secretary General lauded efforts made so far to ensure an appreciable representation of women in the maritime sector and urged governments to put in place incentives that will make maritime trade more attractive to women. I'm very confident, you know, the development of uh, women's activities in maritime sector in Ghana. So I think that, that can be suppressed in collaboration with other neighboring countries. In other news, the Ghana Education Service will, from next academic year, begin in, beginning in September, I beg your pardon, start using a revised curriculum for KG and primary pupils. The revised curriculum will put a premium on reading, writing, arithmetic, and creativity. The decision to revise the curriculum for kindergarten, KG, and primary schools comes 15 years after the old curriculum was introduced. From September this year, Teachers from kindergarten to primary six will make use of the revised education curriculum. The curriculum should be reviewed every five years. Uh, concerns have been raised by the public in general and even the academia. You know, there's always this situation where when children move from one level to the other, the higher level complains that uh, they are not sufficiently prepared. And one of the biggest complaints has been that Children are made to study too many subjects. It's also a very big uh, issue that uh, has been taken on board. According to Chairman of the Ghana Education Service Council, although there are some few additions to the curriculum, other aspects have also been remodeled. We are introducing history because we think we need to uh, instill the spirit of nationalism. Already in existence in the system are uh, textbooks that dealt various aspects of history in the country. So when the books are compliant, you don't have to rush to uh, print. 
you can use the old ones and then as time goes on years go on when you revise the book you add all those new areas that are not already in the, the book although the focus is now on kg to primary six the ges says other levels of the education sector would be added in due course a key aspect of the uh, curriculum is that we are moving away from something we call objective based to what we call standard based for every region one district we have teams working with teachers certainly there are certain aspects that will be new to the teacher and therefore they need to be uh, exposed to Government is to construct 50 steel bridges across the country as part of its infrastructure development, uh, development projects in the country. This was revealed by the Minister of Information, Kojo Ponkuma, and uh, said that this will be added to funding for steel bridges. The government of Ghana is shortly going to commence the construction of 50 steel bridges following the signing of a credit facility agreement um, with the Czech Republic and these bridges will be constructed in selected communities across the 16 regions as part of the infrastructure works of the Akufuado administration. The Minister for Roads and Highways signed on behalf of the Government of Ghana and uh, the Ambassador of the Czech Republic signed on behalf of the Czech Government and it is for the design, supply and installation of the small and medium steel bridges across the 16 regions of this country. Now that we have succeeded in stabilizing the macro, invest heavily in infrastructure. One of the things we are doing is these 50 steel bridges across the country. Now, according to the agreement, the Department of Feeder Roads will have 20 of those bridges for some selected feeder roads. The Ghana Highway Authority itself will have 20 of those bridges for major highways. And then the Department of Urban Roads will have 10 of those bridges um, for some urban road connections. The project is estimated to be completed within a period of 24 months from the commencement date. It is a 47.5 million euro credit agreement or credit facility between the government of Ghana and the Czech Republic. Now, President Akufuado is beginning the first phase of his 2019 tour of the country, starting from the six newly created regions. Briefing the media on the president's itinerary, Information Minister Kojo Ponkuma said feedback from the tour will help the president in the delivery of the NPP government's objectives. The president is from today beginning the first phase of his 2019 national tour. As you may recall, the president embarks on an annual national tour visiting each region of the country since he assumed office in 2017. The tours provide him with first-hand knowledge of developments and ongoing projects nationwide. This year, he's starting his tour with the new regions, with the six new regions. And the first phase, is, first phase is taking him to the Western North, the Bono East, and the Ahafo regions between today and Monday. Later this afternoon, he will cut sword for the construction of the main campus of the Bibiani College of Health Sciences. Later today as well, he will again cut sword for the construction of the Sihi Riosso Town Roads and inspect a business resource center that is being put up there. Tomorrow, for example, he will also in the Western North region inspect the site for construction works at the new regional coordinating council that is being or is to be put up in Sifi Riosu. On Friday, for example, he will be in the Ahafu region. He starts the tour of the Ahafu region from Friday. Um, one of the highlights is the inspection of the proposed site for the construction of the regional coordinating council. That is a new regional coordinating council that is being built for the Ahafu um, region. Um, you would also notice that on Saturday, again, he will be in the Ahafu region. He would inspect uh, one district, one factory project at Tanoso, among others. And then on Sunday, for example, he'll be commissioning a health insurance building and a female ward 
at the Atebubu Government Hospital. Um, on Monday, he will be in the Bono East region, where he would inspect a number of uh, projects there as well. Now, so who wins the VGMA Dancehall Artist of the Year? Gringo headmaker Shatawale, topmost uh, Kanka Stone Boy, and Mobile Award winning act Samini are all eyeing the title. You say waiting, come back with your team, yeah. You are the most original. Anyway. In recognition of the growing popularity of the dancehall genre, the Vodafone Ghana Music Awards Board created the category to honor the most outstanding dancehall act. Introduced in 2015, the category has carved an enviable attention for itself as the favorite of many music lovers. Stoneboy was the first artist to win the title. The Go Higher Headmaker beats competition from five other contenders, including his musical godfather Samini, to emerge tops. Four years down the line, Stoneboy holds the record as the most decorated dancehall musician at the Vodafone Ghana Music Awards. Born Livingstone Eche Setakle, Stoneboy has won the Reggae Dancehall Artist of the Year Award four times in a row. But to feel better about themselves, fans of Shatawale have argued that Stoneboy had a winning streak at the time Shatawale was blacklisted. The battle lines have been drawn as the 20th VGMA beckons. Shatawale, Stoneboy, Samini, Episode and AK Songstress are all eyeing the title. Will Stoneboy make it five times in a row? Stoneboy <laughs> If I saw where I could have, and I could have no, and you know, the out no, and that's it, and everything. What did you 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 What who rules the category at the 2019 Vodafone Garden Music Awards? It's a, it's a clear decision. It should go for Stoneboy because Stoneboy has been dropping hits all throughout the year. He's the man of the moment based on shows he's playing abroad and based on the people he's been able to associate with recognition he's gained so far. These are the things that we should look out for. I prefer Shatawali, man. Because the guy is a good worker, hard worker. He has promoted dancehall in Ghana a lot. I'll give it to Shatawali. Yeah, I'll give it to him because I think he deserves it. Samini supposed to have because uh, that Oba is very reggae. Like, it's very nice as reggae and the dancer artist of the year supposed to be for the same Samini. Of course, the Stone Boy Shatawale rivalry took a center stage. Well, if, if it becomes difficult to find a winner, just, just give it to me. Well, that's all for Made Your Life here on TV3. Thanks very much for watching. My name is Park Kwesi Asari. For more news, you can log on to our website, 3news.com.